Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to The What Life. We have the pleasure of a crit race this afternoon that I've dived into as a bit of an impromptu Friday lunchtime event. First things first, we have switched up to the metric system. So we're 24 and a half kilometers with a hundred meters of elevation. We're calling this uh, Zwift, Crif Zwift, Zwift? <coughs> Zwift Crit Racing Club, the Fan Flats. Sorry, guys, I stumbled over that one. There's 27 riders or so taking part, and I obviously the giveaway is in the name, but it is dead flat. But it, that only really came to my realization once we kind of got underway and really stuck into the event. I did enjoy this. I thought it was great. A little bit of um, chat amongst the guys. First and foremost, the one thing I will say, if you're going to watch anything to do with this race, please just skip forward to my sprint finish. I finally put one together. It's probably my proudest moment to date. Um, it's something that I've kind of not really been working on because normally the races are just like blisteringly fast and I'm really struggling to hold the groups. I'm not really part of the sprint, but this one I am super happy with. Um, a few little things to it that kind of I will talk you through towards the end of the race that, that made it a little bit more uh, manageable for me and how I tried to control it in terms of like spinning up and using my cadence before the sprint. So I was taking some of the pressure off my legs and then or the, the neuromuscular side of it and then diving into the sprint itself but like literally guys I, I am very proud of my my sprint on this one so if you check out one thing please do just skip through to the end i'll probably chapter mark it for you so this is a long lead in and then four loops obviously crit club so same same loop each time and i'll give you the stats on the loops in a minute the fun thing about this being a flat race, um, once we realize it's flat, you know, we get a few attacks throughout the race, which were the things that kind of made the difference. A few guys riding off front. Um, I do, unfortunately, you know, spoiler alert, miss the move. I don't know how I do it. It kind of annoys me that I let it happen, or it does really annoy me that I let it, ha let it happen. I try and chase down the move, and it just wasn't working for us as a group, so it becomes a bit of a two-part race. So that's the kind of the, the rundown on, on how this goes down in the first place. The attacks I really enjoyed, and for the best part, this was the thing, is um, I was kind of trying to get a feel for the race, and this sounds, I know this always, I love hearing myself talk about this because <laughs> we're talking about Swift Esports racing, but I love it, guys. Um, I was trying to get a feel for it. And what I mean by that is, like, how was the group responding to the attack? So as you can see now, a couple of guys up front, the rest of the group were coming through and kind of working to catch them. So that happened a few times. So this is kind of my mentality. I got caught in this kind of like, okay, well, I don't always need to be leading the bridge or leading the chase up to the attack. And ultimately, that's what catches me out. And I, I guess some of the other guys in the group out is that some, you know, a, a number of riders attack the group. And then as a group, we don't close it down or no one kind of takes it upon themselves to close it down. And then they just end up getting away. And by the time um, we realize that and I try and message the group to see whether we can do anything about it it's just too late which was a bit of a shame i think there's two power-ups for this race and that's the feather and the ghost obviously uh that's it we have a quite a funny chat with someone um i do <laughs> it was a little bit cheeky of me i do understand i'd love to see your guys thoughts on this but on lap four when we come into the lap i do throw it out to the group asking who got a ghost for the final lap obviously that being the uh I imagine the less useful power-up when it comes to the final sprint, unless you are a super strong rider. Um, so I do throw it out to the group, and then I get a private message from someone who didn't want to show their hand to the group. I think it was uh, Steve. <laughs> but nonetheless, it was. Um, I thought that was quite funny that I threw it out to the group and someone private messages me to, just to not show their hand. Proper game of poker on the bike <laughs> this week, which I thought was a class move, actually. Um, that was well played. Uh, I didn't mean... I wasn't trying to necessarily get people to tell like it wasn't a case it wasn't a tactical move asking who got a ghost um it was more just you know to find it funny that that person was going to struggle a little bit more in the final sprint so obviously being a four loop race you get a real good vibe for the finish line and that was important for me i've i've only just switched over to the metric system so i do kind of struggle when it comes to you, you know 400 meters 500 meters i'm just getting my head around that normally i work on like quarter a mile half a mile that kind of thing so 
it's when it came to the final lap and the sprint and the distances i i am still trying to do my you know i'm guys i'm doing this for you i'm trying to figure out how the metric system relates to to my cycling and my riding but what you'll see guys is um a the tempo of the race in general is a tiny bit calmer i come in and close this race out in a touch under 36 minutes at 35.54 holding 3.6 watts per kg average for the race which i think i'm I'm pretty happy with like considering it's a reasonable distance uh, event and you know it's not a massive group and it didn't feel super hard and that's something we're definitely going to talk about is the perceived effort and how my training has developed to get to the point where some of these races from a perceived effort point of view are feeling easier so ultimately i'm able to maybe do more races or try and find myself in a position where you know the the strain effect and the consequence of these races is not quite so dramatic on my body which has a consequence on my development because obviously to improve you do need adaptation and to get adaptation you basically need stimuli that promotes that so the fact that these are feeling just that touch more manageable means that i'm getting less adaptation less stimuli that's going to result in adaptation so I'm, I'm trying to figure out what I do with my training to basically take that next step. I haven't been able to kind of hold a race or do anything that has kind of put me over that four watt per kg mark for like 20 minutes or something like that. And that's definitely the goal. Maybe like doing a run up the Alp and trying to hold four watts per kg uh, for you know 20 minutes or at least have that as a as a marker within that ride is is super like that's my basically next goal and that's something that i'm trying to work towards and figure out how i do that with my training but the one thing i'm noticing is that some of the swift races you know even swift racing league and some of the swift monthly races are becoming that little bit more manageable i don't want to say easier because obviously i'm still like nowhere near in terms of being competitive but the the bits where the race is a little bit calmer is now feeling incredibly uh, I keep using that word, but it's a very manageable ride for me and a manageable pace and a manageable heart rate. And that's very important. But then the knock on effect of that is, is it's having less uh, of a neuromuscular stimulation and like anaerobic stimulation. But the nice thing is it does mean I can do it more and then that will kind of provide an aerobic stimulation and I can improve basically my mitochondria. And then that's effectively leads on to that zone two stuff. So I am kind of skipping through the race a little bit and you do see that a few guys are attacking and, and myself as well trying to like stay in the mix. And this is fundamentally where I make my mistake because the guys at the front now that I am now moving with, I was like, okay, I realize that sometimes like I'm moving with these guys and then the group comes through and I'm trying to hold these guys and the group would always come back through. So people were attacking the group but it wasn't breaking the group up it was fatiguing the group but it wasn't breaking the group up and up until now i'd always been like happy to go with the move try and hold the wheel and then the group would always come through so this is ultimately where my mistake comes from is i kind of read the race a little bit wrong in that up until this point every move had been covered and then the one move i don't cover is the move that gets away and that's like that's a little bit disheartening and i felt like i was doing a lot of the right things like worrying about my position and then the time that i don't worry about my position and put my faith in some of the other riders uh, this isn't to say anyone did anything wrong it's just we let that move happen without reacting to it quick enough and we'll see that uh, in, I think it's at the end of the third lap. And part of it was, like, I didn't think that anyone would put a move in that was going to stick two whole laps out from the finish. I thought that was quite a brazen thing to do. I, I thought that with two laps to go, we'd be able to close down um, any move, especially if it wasn't like a big pack move. You know, if there wasn't six or seven riders up front, uh, ultimately ends up being three riders that make this move. Uh, one of which who doesn't end up on Zwift Power, and, and the, um, but nonetheless, they're still out there riding, and we can, could have easily gone gone with the move if kind of been a bit more situationally aware. As I said, part of that was promoted into that full sense of security by it being a really flat course. 
obviously you get 100 meters over the course of the four laps but the long lead in so you're looking at about 20 meters you know at the most per lap you know including the lead in as well so we're getting to the point where positionally like i just did i i was kind of just making these conscious decisions i didn't need to chase down the you know the first wheel the second wheel the third wheel because i felt comfortable that as a group we'd always ride back in but that was my mistake and the group starts breaking up here and i just kind of comfortably think oh well the group the, the riders that are behind me we're just going to keep moving through and we'll catch up with that group ahead and ultimately this is kind of what leads to a bit of an uh oh moment because we catch up or i certainly make make an effort to to kind of ride in and kind of get onto those those front wheels again but then somehow and i'm not really sure how it happens because you can see on the on the power chart at the bottom that i kind of make the effort to to cross over to the front the front like well, the front section of the group and then i let my watts come off because i want the group to come back through so i can sit back in the draft but then I just, I don't know, I just let it get away. These three guys make a move now, coming up to the last bend before the finish line, and we just don't cover it. And I'm not sure whether they use that turn at the top of the course as a chance to really kick and, and move away, because this is one of those U-turns where it turns off sticky draft, it turns off a lot of the dynamics, and you can actually just whip around it quite quickly and kind of kick kick on i think that's just what happened so these guys make their move now three front runners but we are we're still quite a big group i don't know how uh, we managed to kind of miss it in the i just thought okay look they're going to swing round we'll swing round and we'll we'll just kind of all ride up and back on and you get those three riders off the front three not being a huge amount when it comes to quite a big race but ultimately Oh, we just kind of let it go without paying enough attention. And anyone who had bridged now would have basically, you kind of could have sat on the front three the, or the wheel of the front three riders. And that was, uh, that was definitely kind of the big mistake because this move that's happened here and these three riders, they, they should not be riding away from a group of whatever we are, like 18, 20 riders as three riders with two full laps to go. We should be chasing them down. And I understand that obviously I'm sat at the back, but the reason I'm sat at the back is because I was kind of under the impression that as a group, we'd close them down. It just wasn't, it just didn't seem to happen. Um, and by the time I realize kind of what's going on in the, like, so, so now my whole race is basically keeping an eye on the name chart on the right of the screen and just seeing how many seconds ahead these guys were and i message the group now bit of situational awareness guys like we like we might have to chase these guys down and they were like five six seconds ahead so they've been opening up a gap and a few guys were keen to give that a crack so we kind of at least pick up the pace but the problem is, is now that we're picking up the pace, I think they are also picking up the pace and we just weren't closing the gap. I'm always keeping an eye on the right hand side, keeping how many seconds ahead they are. When I when I get to the front of the group, obviously the guys who are you know, attacking, you can see that they're 18 seconds ahead, 12 seconds ahead. And that wasn't getting any slower or that wasn't that wasn't coming down. So. I was trying to do my bit you know if you put a call to arms out there you've kind of got to be willing to put the work in yourself so i certainly was like i was trying to work with anyone that was that was keen um and this is probably the worst time to mention it but i had a bike fit yesterday and completely changed my riding position on the bike and i really enjoyed it it's nice but it does feel very different um i, I have a video coming out on it i've got a video coming out on oh look i i unlock the zwift concept <laughs> <laughs> bike isn't it crazy that you do a crit race with 100 meters or 99 meters of elevation and that's the thing that completes the everest challenge <laughs> lol anyway i had a um bike fit yesterday i've got a video coming out on that i got a video coming out on like 10 questions with a bike fitter that's going to answer like a lot of kind of simple questions that anyone might have in terms of you know what a bike fit does and, and how it works and the things that you can focus on but i also have a couple of videos on like how to do your cleat position um how to f kind of make sure that your cleat is centered on your pedal correctly relative to your knee and these were the things that i hadn't paid any attention to 
up until obviously yesterday when I when I went for this pro bike fit uh, with the guys at Pearson's in uh, East Sheen or next to Richmond Park in London. I'll drop um, some information down below or you can just wait for the video that hopefully we'll put together next week. But it was very interesting because I really changed basically the position of my front knee over or relative to my foot that's clipped into the pedals. But it does mean that now I'm using a slightly different pedal stroke and it's going to take me a few weeks to get used to it. But the idea is, is that I'm basically using the correct combination of the top of my leg, my, you know, my quad and my uh, hip flexor and those muscle groups. And then the bottom of my leg, my hamstring, my glutes and things like that and combining them way more efficiently now. So it's kind of like, I don't want to say a step backwards, but it's not a step forward for hopefully a big step forward, if that makes sense. So it doesn't necessarily feel like a step backwards. And just a side note from the race, this was when uh, we were having a quick chat about um, who has a ghost and who has feather for the final lap. We had some private chats about when was going to be the appropriate time to use that feather, when was going to be the appropriate time to kind of or use the ghost or the feather and then dive in to a sprint finish. But anyway, so I have a video on that and you know, cleat position, pedal position that I think is going to be really interesting for anyone who doesn't really know uh, anything about it. And I, obviously, guys, I knew nothing about it. I knew nothing about how to set up a cleat. or and, and I imagine a lot of people have set up their own bikes. You know, it comes in a big brown box. You make an Instagram video about it and then you put it together. Um, and that's basically what I had to do. I built my own bike. This was a little section in the race where there was a small incline and I thought I would try and work a little bit harder because I thought if I worked harder, I'd be able to try and tire a few legs when it came out to the sprint. Now to chat about the sprint because I'm so happy about it and to, to, to round this video off, this race off, I was basically keeping on my cadence. I was trying to keep my cadence really high. So take a lot of the pressure off the neuromuscular. So I wasn't trying to use too much. I was trying to rely on cadence and take some pressure off my neuromuscular so it wasn't fatiguing my muscles. It was just aerobic turning the pedals. And then under, with the impression of just letting that lactic kind of hopefully wash out my legs so that I could put a kick in for the sprint finish. Obviously, I, I imagine I might have been one of the few guys that had a power up still left. So obviously, we're still racing for fourth place. That's the only thing available. One guy takes the early charge on a... Uh, on a ride or an attack at the front with the last uh, kind of half K to go. And I was happy to sit in the group knowing that we're going to move quite well. And I wanted to time my sprint pretty well. It was just a simple case of then dropping from a high cadence into a lower cadence, switching through gears and not pushing too hard straight away. Power up. So not too hard. I didn't want to go straight into anaerobic where I had like five seconds of just max effort and hitting 1200 or 1100 watts and just dying. I tried to build it up and then I come off and you can see me just sit back down and then I go again and it's basically a heads up sprint and I, I've been the guy at the front and it is hard to keep going but guys check this out just on the line it goes to a bike throw and I pick up fourth place I'm really proud of that and um, that's the first time I've ever managed to put a good one together right guys cheers for that I will see you on the next one